Welcome back to Cross the Podcast. My name is Kossi. Welcome back to a brand new video. Is Mikel Arteta really confused? Is the reason why Arsenal are dropping points? Is he the reason why we are not winning games in this video? We're going to have to debate. We're going to have to agree to disagree. Is Mikel Arteta the problem at Arsenal Football Club? Now, personally, I think Mikel needs to work on a few things. As a young manager, um, it's a little bit too too visible like you can easily see the mistakes is making as a young manager the mistakes is making and they're costing the team but i tell you one thing i think it's also a genius and arsenal should we get this formation should we should we get this style uh, running we might actually be a big problem in the premier league and also in europe this season hit the like button let me know in the comment box below what are your thoughts on michael arteta do you think Mikel is going to let us down this campaign? Or do you think the team will eventually come good? 500 likes. Let's get into it. Now, of course, um, I think the big the big concern here is the way Arsenal are playing, um, especially against Crystal Palace, against Fulham, you know, against Fulham uh, as well. And in that Nottingham Forest game, there is something not convincing. And what is actually not convincing about this Arsenal team, it is the final third. All right. It's easy to talk about Kai Havers. It's easy to talk about, um, you know, any other player. And I think it would be kind of scapegoating. Yes, Thomas Pater playing at right back um, is a problem, but Pater is not actually playing as a right back 100%. He's playing as a player that is actually deployed at right back and then shifting into midfield. So we've seen that and we know what Mikel Arte is trying to do because players like Zichenko and players like uh, Julian Timba have done that and we have actually loved it. So um, I, don't want to, I don't want us to scapegoat anyone. And I don't want us to pick one player and go, he's the reason why Arsenal are losing games. He's the reason why Arsenal are dropping points. I want us to look at the collective picture, what the manager wants to do, and where exactly we are in this problem. So, number one, I'm going to blame Mikel Arteta. And the, I'm, I'm, the reason I'm going to blame Mikel is the wastage of time, the wastage of preseason uh, that we had. We've had... Around three months of good preseason, we played a couple of games, around six, seven games in preseason. And if this is the idea, if this if this was purely the idea of him as a manager, of what he wants to do this campaign, he should have let it shine. He should have let it out right in preseason. You cannot have a preseason where you're playing something different. You're playing Leandro Trossard pre predominantly. You're playing Trossard as uh, as you left eight and. Then when the region when the season starts, you actually do something very different. It's it's kind of a wastage of time. Preseason, I, I kind of feel like we played much better um, in the last games of preseason as compared to the Man United game, as compared to the, the MLS All Star game. I think Arsenal did a, you know a pretty much good job. So for me, uh, what I don't understand with with Mikel, if you actually want to play um, Kai Havers, Rice. Odegaard and, and, and Saka and Martinelli, that is what you should be giving the boys um, in precision. That is exactly what you should be, uh, you know, uh, you know, putting out as your lineup. But when you, when you do something different in precision and then you try to teach the boys something different right from day one of the Premier League season, then I agree with the fans that feel Mikel is a problem. And I think this system is actually very complicated. It's one system that is going to take time for these boys to drill down. And I want us to continue with this system because one of because of one or two reasons. One is if we go back now and then try to learn something, it, it will be disastrous. So I don't want Arsenal to unlearn whatever we are doing. I want us to continue on the same trajectory. I want us to continue doing the same thing until the boys can actually perfect it, right? But it's, it's a big problem with, with, with Mikel. It's a question that um, he's got to ask himself. Why did we train something different in pre-season and then the season arises, uh, arrives and then we actually do something very, very different? I love Mikel as a manager, but he's got to check himself. Like I said, he always looks into the mirror. He always uh, asks himself uh, if he's the right man to take the project ahead. We still think he's the right man. I still personally think he's the right man. He's just got to clear out those few uh, you know, misconceptions about himself and those few problems as well. Uh, now, number two is why are our best players playing in their wrong positions? I think we will all agree that Martin Odegaard is not as good as he was last campaign. We will all agree that Thomas Partey is not as good as was last campaign. And we will all agree that Gabriel Magalhaes is not as good as was last campaign because he's playing from the bench, right? So 
I, th I think that is a question that any manager has got to ask himself. You've not seen Pep Guardiola play Alan Haaland as a 10, uh, play him as a winger. He plays him as a number 9. And despite the fact that uh, Kevin De Bruyne is such a versatile player, he's always played him in those you know, positions where he can create chances and you know, feed the striker and be the, the difference in the team. I think Mikel is a genius, again. And I will talk about uh, I'll talk about it here. Why he's a genius and why uh, this system could actually bear a lot of fruit for Arsenal. But my problem is our players are being played out of position, and that actually affects their ability to uh, you know to to give you the best output. So you look at Kai Havers; he's playing in his best position, but Odegaard is not, right? And then you look at um, you know, Partey is playing out of position, and so is Ben White. Ben White is literally not playing out of position because he's um, a centre back. But if he has played right very well for around 38 games or even 40 games last campaign as a right back, and he has actually proven that he can play there and be one of the best players in the Premier League, I think we should play him there. I think that is the position where he needs to play. I, I just don't understand why he changes the system and then he changes positions and roles, right? I think Odegaard should stay as the creator, allow him to arrive into the penalty area, allow him to roam around that, um, you know, penalty area, and he will create chances. He's a very good, you know, creative player. Uh, so for me, playing players out of position, that is inexcusable. I, I don't care how, how genius you are. I do not care what kind of system you're trying to implement. you got to play the best tools in the right positions, right? Our creativity is coming down, courtesy of Odegaard, because you know, Odegaard has got that ability to make three, four key passes per 90. Maybe I'm exaggerating things, but at least 1.5 to three, um, you know, key passes per 90. He's got the ability uh, to do that. So I think Odegaard, uh, you know, Partey, and whoever is being played up position, we should get our system, you know, back in track. We should get our starting 11 back in track. I don't think Mikel doesn't know his starting 11. Like many people are saying, he doesn't know his starting 11. He's actually uh, confused. He isn't confused. He knows his starting 11. And he's trying to sell a dream to as many players as, as, as possible. And that's a problem as well. Because I think Rice has been sold a dream. You'll be starting for Arsenal. You could be captain probably in the future and things like that. And I actually don't have a problem with that. My problem is to accommodate Rice and Thomas Partey, it is affecting the system. So you are either going to drop Partey or you're going to drop Declan Rice in order for, for you to serve the system and for, for you to you know, just have um, the right players in their right positions. Number three, Leon Trossard and Gabriel Magalis are suffering as victims of this confusion. And again, Mikel needs to uh, think about it. You know, Trossard started against um, Fulham and it was pretty much average. Very, actually, he was really average. And I'll tell you the reason why Trusted was actually average in that game. So, because you have Kai Havers playing in that left eight, in that, you know, it's, 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 it's like a channel. It's, it's a pocket of space. There's not a lot of uh, space there. And actually, there is little space for Kai Havers and Martin Odegaard to operate into. You know, the reason is because um, you have Thomas Partey, who's more like a midfielder, trying to, you know, occupy that channel. Then you also, you've also got um, Declan Rice on the left-hand side trying to ocu occupy uh, that left pocket of space left by, uh, you know, Kai Havers or where Kai Havers should be actually operating. So when you introduce a player like Leandro Trossard, who is actually, like, really left-minded and left-handed, that is where Leandro Trossard operates. So what he did, he, uh, he introduced Leandro Trossard and Kai Havers, two players that are actually going to do something very similar and that, you know, two players that are actually going to do, uh, you know, the same thing. And they were crossing each other's, uh, each other's paths while trying to, um, you know, just get confused. And I just hated the picture of the way it looked. Okay, so for me, Trossard has to play. But he has to play in the right, uh, in the right place. The reason that's why Trossard was actually a successless campaign when he has, when we, when he actually played um, for Arsenal, 
it's easy. You had a granny jacker who is not so good at utilizing that uh, left pocket of space. So that that channel was always open and Leandro Trossard could actually occupy it. Because Thomas Partey played as a single pivot, you didn't have um, another player arriving in that uh, in that space. Oleksandr Zichenko could come, but he had, some, he had his limitations and he's got the ability to um, read the game and just find another pocket of space uh, to, you know, to get into. I don't think Kai Havers and Leandro Trossard um, really gave us that. So that's another problem for me. And I think, um, you know, Trossard has to play. Gabriel Magalhães has to play. I really feel for Gabi. He has been called up for Brazil, courtesy of, of his very good performances. And suddenly, the manager has dropped him. Now, Mikel Atene, in his last press conference, he said, Gabi knows why he's not playing. Well... Yes, he knows when he's not playing, but we are not winning games. And we are we look a little bit susceptible um at the back. It looks like he's trying to you know he's trying to overthink the William Saliba ability. I think Saliba is a great a great centre back. And he could be up there with the likes of Virgil van Dijk in the next three, four, five years. But my problem with Mikel, and this is my problem with um any manager that overthinks uh, a system. William Saliba does well when he's partnered with a player who can actually complement him and a player he can complement. So with Gabriel Magales, you have a player who is um, a little bit, you know, uh, hasty and at, at times he makes a lot of mistakes. So William Saliba will always clear and will always cover. Saliba is, is, is quick and fast and very decisive and very confident. I don't think Gabriel Magales is that. But Gabriel is actually, on the other hand, he's got that ability to play the ball and he's got the ability to, um, you know, just, you know, stop a man. Like he will do something ridiculous. He will pull you, pull your shot. He will actually bring you down, but he will stop a man. Okay, so I think Gabi needs to play. He's one of our best best defenders. Yes, if if, if Timba is in the team, and Gabi drops, I don't have a problem with that because I think Timba is slightly better than Gabi. But for now, I don't think Gabi has to be on the bench. Number four, Michael Atta is a genius, and you've got to give him that time, uh, that benefit, benefit the, town, the, the doubt. He's actually going to come good, and the system will come good. So I'm going to try to explain to you something very, very simple. So what Michael is trying to do here, and this is um, uh, a complicated system that will actually take some time. He's trying to create two players in Rice and Pate that are going to be protecting and forming triangles and overloads on the left-hand side and also on the right-hand side. So I'll give you an example. So you look at that Fulham game, when everything had actually, um, uh, you know, had been playing out and Arsenal were in position, but nothing was being created, you will notice that much of our uh, our playing time was spent on the on the right-hand side. Odegaard, Pate, Saka, and... Um, and Ben Wine, right? So there is that over reliance on the right hand side. It was that it was there as well uh, last campaign. So what Mikel has done here, he's created a new role, a new player in Kai Havers, then Gabriel Martinelli, then Declan Rice, and then either any of the strikers can actually shift to the left. What what he's trying to do? He's trying to create two balanced sides in this Arsenal team. I love it. I love the way it looks because it's very, very thoughtful thoughtful of him. Last season, our creativity and defensively were a little bit solid at, on the right-hand side. Uh, Alexander Zichenko was a little bit light in terms of uh, defending and then that, that meant that um, Arsenal were a little bit light defensively. So what Mikel has done, he's created a system where the left-hand side is as effective as the right-hand side. So um, Fabio Vieira comes on, he's operating on the left-hand side. You look at where both of the goals actually came from. They came from the, right, from the left-hand side. And they were scored on the right-hand side. Edin Ketia and, uh, of course, Saka's penalty. Saka is a, is a right-hand side man. Uh, and so you've got to love the system. It is, he's trying to create that kind of balance between right and left. So if the right hand side is dead, Saka and Odegaard are you know are dead out of the game, then Martinelli, Vieira, Rice, Kai Havis, uh, maybe Trossard can come and impact the game. The left hand side can impact the game as much as the uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the the right hand side. So the one thing you'll have seen as, as well this campaign is that we have scored goals and created goals both on the right hand side and also on the left hand side. For example, the Nottingham Forest game, 
Saka and his bomber comes from the right hand side. But again, the Edin Ketia goal comes from the left hand side uh, with that flick on from Gabriel Martinelli. That is that is one example. Uh, so you've got to you, you've got to um, you've got to like the idea. The system will come good, but it will take them, uh, some time. But I love the idea. I love the Mikel, the fact that Mikel is thoughtful and he has gone. I've seen a problem. I'm gonna try to solve it. And lastly, Kai Havs and Gabriel Martinelli will improve, and we all know it. Stop scapegoating Kai Havers. It's, it's, it's nonsense. It's pure nonsense. And why I think it's pure nonsense is easy. All the time, when a player is not performing well, when a player is not actually on his best, um, we've got, we, we, come, we come out about, to bite them. We've, we've beaten Ramsdale. We've beaten Gabriel Magalis. We've beaten Alexander Zichenko. We've beaten uh, Bukayo Saka before. And we've beaten Gabriel Martinelli. So, as fans... You want good results. But you deep down you know that that system on the left-hand side is working. We have created some goals from the left-hand side. We've, both of our goals from the, from, from the Fulham game have actually come from the, uh, the left-hand side. So I think it will come good. Just give it time. All right? Hit the like button and let me know what you think about my analysis of Mikel Arteta and the problems Arsenal have at the moment. I'll speak to you right in the next one.